the people that work for me, I'm I'm paying them with my tokens. And uh, if there were ever there ever a time when the local lord, or rather the monarch, or some sort of like uh, you know person who is the governor, for example, ever wants me to go to war, I will send them. They have already <laughs> pledged fealty to me. What do you mean? This sounds like feudalism. This is so stupid. You're you're silly. I'm just the girl boss who makes pizza. Um, this town was paradise and everyone started working from home. What the fuck is this? When the pandemic started, everything went online. And so we could work wherever. Honestly, I was really feeling burnt out of the intensity of New York. Did you know they have a Murray's cheese shop in Gunnison? Yeah, they're <laughs> cool. Came here to ski, it was on the Epic Pass, and I kind of just fell in love with it. It was a really cool town. I started looking around at apartments and- Oh my God, this town is beautiful. What the or fuck? condos, the next thing you know, I said I'd put an offer on one. one. Yeah. Tyler Rogers and Bella McGoldrick are living the dream. Freed from having to go into a physical office for work, they gave up their New York apartment this year and joined a migration called the Zoom Boom, remote workers who've traded urban areas for life a little further off the grid. Have you heard this phenomenon, you know, of the Zoom town? For sure. Often you speak to locals and they're kind of talking about like the changes that are happening and I'm always like, oh, that's me. It is a little bit of a weird position to be in, to be like aware of what's going on and to be what is kind of the problem, I guess, in some people. Dude, I'm mad. What the fuck? They live like this beautiful fucking, they live in this like beautiful town of fucking Colorado. Like, looks like a goddamn, looks like straight out of a fucking Holland, a painting in Holland or some Lies. shit. What do you hear? What do they say? People talk about the shortage of housing for local workers. There's like a lack of rental space or pay place for them to own. So yeah, I think people are just afraid that this little place will just sort of change and like evolve into something that they don't recognize. Property values have increased hundreds of percent since the 90s here. Back in the day, you could get one of these houses for 60 grand probably. And now what does something like this go for? Million dollars plus, 1.8, 2, 2 million something, it's huge. Wow. Never forget this is the kind of gentrification Twitter users wanted you to do. I live in Colorado Springs. There's a massive housing shortage even here. Paul Brown moved to Crested Butte in 2008. I love how they did this bathroom. It is amazing. He now works as a realtor, where he has a front row seat to the already tight housing market getting tighter. The flood of pandemic demand drove the median home price in Crested Butte to a million dollars in 2020 an increase of 38% in just one year. And there aren't that many homes to go around. Roughly 30% fewer houses were up for sale compared to last year, and long-term rentals are almost non-existent. This is an example of a house that has tremendous flow and can accommodate a lot of people. Now oh this is an example of a home that will rent for that thousand dollars a night plus, just because of how gargantuan it is. What the fuck? Wait, they're renting these house? I thought they were like buying it to live in it. What the fuck? 1K a night in Colorado? Are you nuts? Wow. Oh yeah. The view is not poor, that's for sure. That old saying million dollar views, you might as well call it 10 million dollar views nowadays. So as soon as quarantine lifted last year, I would say four out of five phone calls starting in June of 2020 was, hey, I want to come live there for three or four months. So what's happening to the people who lived here, you know, before this influx? Yeah, so a lot of folks are leaving the valley because they can't find a place to stay anymore. And, you know, you can couch surf or sleep in your car only so long. And when the winter hits, it's not a viable option at all. Oh, yeah. By the way, hello people in Colorado and Idaho. Like, remember how I was talking about Jackson Hole? Dude, ski resort towns are so unimaginably expensive that like seasonal workers have designated areas where they literally sleep in their fucking cars. They have parking spots assigned for homeless seasonal workers and workers in general. The situation is so untenable, so unmanageable.
that restaurants are open for like one hour a day. Okay, because the restaurants are literally working with like one waiter and one fucking chef. It's nuts, dude. It's fucking nuts. Oh. Remote workers aren't the only ones responsible for the crunch. Homeowners who used to rent to long-term tenants are now charging a lot more for their places as short-term rentals. And wealthy out-of-staters are buying up much of the limited inventory as second or third homes. Who do people blame for these issues here? Blame is spread around pretty, pretty well. The animosity is certainly going to be at the people that come to purchase here, but don't actually live here. Or the empty homes is what I think drives people more crazy than the vacations. I wonder why, dude. Dudes are fucking literally living in their cars as they work for the fucking shitters that come here once, uh, uh, you know, one weekend out of the fucking year. And they're living in their car so they can serve those people and make like, you know, seven and a half dollars an hour. The fact that this is booming must be pretty good business for you. It is. I feel like there is a fiduciary responsibility to my clients. But for every home that I take out of available inventory further exacerbates our problem. It's a constant struggle because it could eventually even cost me to lose my roof over my head. In June, the town of Crested Butte declared an affordable housing emergency. Since then, the town has put a moratorium on new short-term rentals, bought a bed and breakfast to convert into affordable housing for seasonal workers, and made it legal for people to camp and park mobile homes on private property. Now the town's considering a ballot initiative that would add a tax on second homes. But not everyone is on board. Okay, a few rules. We'll give everybody a chance to talk. I would absolutely discourage clapping and cheering. I, I do ask for civility, and with that, let's go ahead and open it, uh, open it up to the public. Gentlemen in the back. Second homeowners are your neighbors. A tax that only second homeowners pay but cannot vote on is, div is divisive. I think there's a bit of tone that has entered the conversation that would be kind of reminiscent of the French Revolution, sort of eat the rich. My wife and I give to 14 different charities in this community, and uh, it, would affect our, it would affect our donations. Be careful on the tax. I think that there are so many generous, creative, smart, educated CEOs and people that really understand what's going on here. They want to help. Don't, don't push them away. Kylina Falzone owns two of the most popular restaurants on Crested Butte's Main Strip and employs hundreds of workers in town. Since so many of her employees can't find housing, she started renting some rooms to them and is now building new homes where her staff can live. Everybody wants to be open seven days a week, but it's just really difficult without the staff. And as you'll see, there's help wanted in every window, help wanted. Can you show me around a little bit? Yeah, please follow me. This is our pizza line on a busy night. We're putting out about 280 pizzas an hour. That's a sweat on his, he's working hard. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw some dough. It's a big moment, let's go boys. How do you do this? So you go, you make your edge, so you're gonna go around. So make your crust, that's the most important part right now, right, is the crust. Ooh, yeah, yeah. A lot of my employees live in tents live in vans, car camp, couch surf, but that's not a really great way to thrive and to like work. We are building homes for our employees and I could be charging minimum of 2,500 to 2,800 for those, those houses, but we charge 1,500 a month. So you're subsidizing your employees to basically make it possible for them to live here? Yes. How do you make that work financially as a business? Uh, well, it really doesn't. Is there any resentment here, you know, among the locals towards people who have arrived recently as part of this Zoom boom? Yes, there is. And I'm a, a, a big proponent against that. Nobody owns Crested Butte and it should be available for many people from all over the world to enjoy. Do you support things like putting a pause on these short-term rentals? I have a unique perspective on that because I do have short-term rentals as well in Crested Butte. You know, when I can rent it out to locals, I do, but when I need to make money and not every project that we do can be philanthropic, I have to be able to make money to be able to do these types of things. When I, when I can put locals in, I, went, I will, and then when I need to make money, I have to. As, you know, one of these short-term rental owners, 
Are you part of the problem here? Some people could say I am, but here's the other thing. If Wait, this lady literally said she covers her mortgage in one week? And then homies, and then like they literally fast pan to a dude who's like, yeah, I'm homeless. I'm living in a fucking, in a tent, in a car. Why is she? F oh my God. People could say I, I have am. to run that again. But here's the other thing. If they put a short term run. By the way, what she's doing is not new. Like this concept was at a certain point outlawed. It's called factory towns. Okay. What's next? Is she literally, it's fat, it's feudalism. It's just this disruptive. This disruptive industry called feudalism okay yeah many many capitalists fear this guys uh it's back it's fucking back <laughs> what's next bro is she gonna <laughs> she's like yeah i have uh a commissary okay and you know if the workers need sustenance uh for survival they can purchase it at the commissary i don't understand i mean it's it's called the the company store, if you will, if you want to use like, you know, American terms for it. And it's great. Next thing you know, she's sending them to sending them the battle. Yeah. I, I don't understand why. What? Yeah, we have our own coins. Look how wonderful they are. Look how wonderful our coins are. No, it's not. It's not legal tender. No, no, it only works in the company store. Yes, I'm paying all of my slay. I mean, uh, surf. I mean, uh. I'm peasants. I mean, the people that work for me, I'm, I'm paying them with my tokens. And, uh, if there were ever, there ever a time when the local Lord or rather the monarch or some sort of like, uh, you know, person who is the governor, for example, ever wants me to go to war, I will send them. They have already <laughs> pledged fealty to me. What do you mean? This sounds like feudalism. This is so stupid. You're, you're silly. I'm just a fucking girl boss who makes pizza. Final rule on my house, I will sell it because I won't be able to make the payment. I think my my loan payment, it's a crazy loan. It's a, I had to buy a partner out of it. It's 5,700 a month. It's a two bedroom, two bath. I would have to charge a local 50, 6, 5,700. And how much can you make on it as a short term rental? I can make $800 a night. So you're easily covering your mortgage as a short term? In a week. David Steffen is one of Falzone's employees at The Secret Stash. He lost his housing in June when his landlord didn't renew his lease. So what's your living situation now? I currently live in my truck. So this is the world's sneakiest campsite. So She says she could pay her mortgage by renting the property in a week. She doesn't rent it. She actually builds housing for her staff. Yeah, that her staff pays for. the fuck? You guys not understand the ethical uh, dilemma there or and, and can't afford to pay for, by the way. And also, she said she rents it still. She literally said she rents it. Because she has other short term rentals in town. And if she couldn't do short term rentals anymore, then she wouldn't be able to. Uh, she wouldn't be able to. She would sell her homes. He's not being generous. She's providing the only housing or they're homeless. It's like you said, company, town, or feudal system. She's the only option. She said she can rent it, not that she does. She also said I would sell my house if I couldn't rent, if I couldn't do short-term rentals right here. Uh, well, it really doesn't. Is there any resentment here, you know, among the locals towards people who have arrived recently as part of this Zoom boom? Yes, there is. And I'm a, a, a big proponent against that. Nobody owns Cresta Butte, and it should be available for many people from all over the world to enjoy. Do you support things like putting a pause on these short-term rentals? I have a unique perspective on that because I do have short-term rentals as well in Cresta Butte. Chat. What's up, chat? You know, when I have perspective on that because I do have short-term rentals as well in Cresta Butte. Chat, what do you guys think when the girl boss says she has a unique perspective on that because she has short-term rentals in Crested Butte? What's up, chat? What do y'all think she means by that? Short-term rentals, by the way. Multiple. You know, when I can rent it out to locals, I do. But when I need to make money and not every project that we do can be philanthropic, I have to be able to make... Like, her philanthropic project is... Getting her slaves, I mean serfs, I mean peasants, I mean workers, 
to live in the factory town that she's created. Her, that's her philanthropic project. Make money to be able to do these types of things. When I, when I can put locals in, I, went, I will. And then when I need to make money, I have to. As, you know, one of these short-term rental owners, are you part of the problem here? Some people could say I am. But here's the other thing. If they put a short-term rental rule on my house, I will sell it. Because huh. At least she's doing something. You buy $3 million house. What are you doing? Are you fucking so dumb that you don't understand what she's doing is like, I'm living in my own fucking house in an area that I did not gentrify. You dumb fuck. You really want me to move to Colorado and buy numerous fucking properties and then start a business so I can enslave my employees and like subjugate them? On the condition that if they ever want to have fucking shelter. That I can coercively make them, you know, work for me at whatever price point I dictate. Fuck me, dude. Because I won't be able to make the payment. I think my my loan payment, it's a crazy loan. It's a, I had to buy a partner out of it. It's 5700 a month. It's a two bedroom, two bath. I would have to charge a local 56, 5,700. And how much can you make on it as a short-term rental? I can make... Yeah, dudes will be like this landlord who's literally a sir. I mean, who's literally a fucking lord, okay? Over peasants. is a better leftist than you. A man who bought a fucking house for himself. I am losing my fucking mind, dude. $800 a night. So you're easily covering your mortgage as a short term. In a week. David Steffen is one of Falzone's employees at The Secret Stash. He lost his housing in June when his landlord didn't renew his lease. So what's your living situation now? I currently live in my truck. So this is the world's sneakiest campsite. So when I had to camp, I was like, oh, I'll just come up here. Secret spot. It's crazy because you can see the road from here, but no one has any idea you're up here. Do you consider yourself homeless? Sort of. I was joking the other night that by not living anywhere, I get to live in all of my friends' apartments, but like I don't have a home. I have a car. It's not even like it's unaffordable. Yeah, there's some places coming up that aren't affordable, but most of the time, it's there's nothing to rent. If there's nowhere to live, there's no one to work. And a lot of people... 45K truck, though? Yo, motherfuckers are so brutal under capitalism where they're so fucking used to pulling other workers down like goddamn crabs in a bucket that you see a homeless person and you're still like, well, you know, they have a fucking nice car, dude. Yeah, why doesn't he just sell his only fucking vehicle that allows him shelter and also allows him fucking movement so he can go to his goddamn job and keep making money so he can, what, rent for, like, fucking a couple months? What kind of psychotic take, dude? Oh, my God. People see it, but a lot of people don't want to do anything about it. Come food. on, bro. He can sell that car for, like, fucking 20 grand, 30 grand, dude. That's a lot of months of rent, dude. That's 10 months of rent, dude. If I don't find a place to live, I have to leave. It's, that's just the way it is. Every single option is not here, which sucks, because I really like here. Yeah, how does that feel, that you'd have to leave? Look, he's eating a brioche bun hamburger, too. How dare he, dude? How dare he fucking call himself? He's a bike. He has two bikes. Homeless, but has two bikes, by the way. It feels like a kick in the teeth. The town's on a treadmill right now, and it's just maxed out, and I don't know how long it can stay at this pace before just falling off. It's so nuts, dude. It's so fucking nuts. How is this shit legal? I mean, if she provides the work and the housing, all the fucking money goes back to her. I mean, there have been literal rebellions like violent ones against this exact same subject but once again capitalist dogma is so fucking powerful it's so insanely powerful that people 
unironically fucking advocate for this as though this is like uh, emancipation. This is true emancipation, dude. Look at this wonderful business owner. We have so many different like insanely cancerous ideas that we have just completely injected into the minds of every fucking young, uh, young person in this country, young worker in this country where it's like, oh, he's on that grind set. You know, it's just entrepreneurial. The other lady is a fucking girl boss, for real, for real, on God. That, like, if you're homeless, you need to literally be living in a tent and, and in filth and eating trash, not fucking brioche bun hamburgers. Blows my mind. She makes thousands from land ownership, plus the profit she makes from owning the two biggest restaurants in town. Yeah, I don't get it. Like, I don't know how you don't see how fucked up that is, dude. That's the food from the restaurant he works at that is free. Yeah, well, hey, uh, how dare he complain about a situation? He has a nice car, and also, he's able to uh, buy the food for free or make the food for himself instead of purchasing it with the company tokens. It, the wildest part about that fucking story was that she made it seem like it was a fucking phil philanthropic endeavor. Like, this notion that uh, rich business owners are fucking jobs creators is so psychotic. And let me tell you something. This idea does not exist under a socialist organization of the economy either. Like socialism is about allowing workers to get more out of their own labor. Okay. It's not about fucking philanthropy. Like socialism isn't like, oh yeah, you don't get to work and I still fucking, you, know, you don't have to do anything and I'll still, you know, give you money. Like that's not how this works. Most people don't understand it because, you know, there's been a deliberate effort to propagandize against socialism. There's a lack of information about it overall. But the entire concept revolves around allowing the workers to, to maintain control over their own lives, to have more autonomy, to positively incentivize themselves to work. Oh, yeah, she allows her peasant show of the crops he creates. What a marvelous feudal lord. He's lobbying as a poor person. What the fuck? His truck should be taken of him so he can feel real suffering like what it feels when the top of the hour ad break is dangled in front of him. Oh, come on. <laughs> King Sticks. I don't know who this person is, but he goes, Generous CEO is building homes for your employees who can't afford to live. Sounds like medieval serfs and lords. Yeah. Anyway, um, why is affordable housing for your workers bad? First of all, we don't even know how affordable that is. Secondly, if you don't recognize the coercive elements of like offering housing to your workers that literally pay you back more money because affordable housing is not necessarily free housing, okay? She's literally charging them $1,500 a month. $1,500 a month. You really want your fucking boss to control your living conditions? And also your, uh, every part of your life, dude? No, it's Mad Orchard, not JCS. Oh, okay. They're not houses either. They're just rooms. I wonder how much they make a month. When your employer provides you basic human needs, it creates a leverage relationship. Yeah. It's wild, dude. Like, I can't believe it. She's like double booking. She makes money off of their fucking rent while she's making money off of their surplus labor value, dude. It's nuts. And their surplus labor value is, is just pure profit for her. And then whatever she's fucking, whatever she gets from them, they put a, a, a sizable portion of that paycheck back directly into her pockets. She's making it very affordable, even if they're making minimum wage. What? Dude, are you fucking nuts? Minimum wage there is over $15 an hour. Okay. Let's say it's $20 an hour, dude. Let's say it's $20 an hour. They're still paying fucking $1,500 back to her. In order for that to be considered affordable, one third of income, which is still fucking nuts, but that's what is like considered. Pizza boys need to be making $26 an hour after taxes. So we're at Seaco, Kentucky. I love, the, I love this video here. Behind us here is the Southeast Coal Company store. And the company store was, back in the day, everything you ate, every piece of furniture you bought for your house, whatever the case may be, was bought here using the company currency, which we call... Chad, these are the Trillbillies. Uh, they are... Uh, leftists from, Script. where are they and, from originally? And a lot of people think that this is something that's, you know, far in the distant past, but my granddad 
was paid in company money until the 70s. Let's say you're a boss. Kentucky. <laughs> if you create your own currency, obviously you can keep more of your real U.S. dollars in your pocket because you're not playing your workers. And it's also a really effective means of social control. If you make your employees dependent on the company in every way, whether it's their mortgages, their wages, the things that they buy from the store, uh, then you have a more effective way of controlling every single aspect of their lives. And then you've made really complacent, obedient workers. And that's what every boss wants. A lot of companies are trying to do this. Uh, Amazon, you know, Amazon will offer their employees benefits in Amazon gift cards, for example. Amazon and all these companies now, they do the exact same thing for the exact same reason. They want you to be alienated. The more that they can make you dependent on the company itself, uh, that serves that purpose. If you're in the United States, wealth is built generationally, typically. People around here didn't really have the opportunity to do that because they weren't participating in the real world economy. They were paid in fake money. Uh, they you know, couldn't use that money to max out their retirement vehicles or their Roth IRAs or whatever the case may be to leave anything for the people after they died. And so what happens is you get locked into this sort of vicious cycle of generational poverty. And uh, yeah, we're still experiencing that here. So think about today you probably get your health care through your employer. That's a very advantageous system for your boss and for your employer. It makes you more dependent on them. It makes it harder for you to go take your labor somewhere else and sell it elsewhere. Well, that legacy began in places like the one behind Think about it like this, chatter. In order to become a more productive member in the American labor force, you had to get a college education. That college education made you an insane amount of debtor to an insane degree, right? So now because you have to pay back that debt in the form of student loans, right? Now you have to take on whatever fucking job you can in a job market where they can offer you whatever the fuck they want. Then if you're fortunate enough, you finally get a job and that job also uh, uh, pays for your health care, okay? So now you're dependent on the shit job that's paying you whatever the fuck they want to pay you so you can pay off your student loan debt. And on top of that, it's maybe if you are incredibly fortunate, incredibly fortunate, also covering your health care. You will never want to leave that job now. You are way, way less likely to leave that job now because you don't want to lose your fucking health care. If you lose your health care, the only alternative for you that's available is COBRA which is a wonderful government program where, uh, you know, you're allowed to pay for the entirety of your job covered healthcare bill that is subsidized by your paycheck originally, but now you don't have a paycheck. For example, when I left TYT, I was paying for the platinum healthcare coverage that I had there. Thanks to the Cobra, uh, uh, bill. I paid $666 a month. I was very fortunate. Well, could you imagine? So think about that. These are many different ways that the government keeps you dependent on, and, and more importantly, employee-based ba uh, insurance keeps you subjugated to your job and uh, very much not free. And is here. And historically, Appalachia and communities like this have been sort of the proving ground for what bosses, employers can get away with. I mean, this is tomorrow's people, man. This is everything that you want to see happening in the next 20 or 30 years. That's right here. Having here first, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so don't be surprised if Mark Zuckerberg starts trying to pay his employees in Facebook bucks, because it's something that we've seen before. And don't take out that fucking Apple credit card. <laughs> I'm Terrence. I'm Tom. We're the Trillbillies. And you're watching Means TV. That's right. The new Amazon facility in Tijuana. Is this real? I don't know if this is a real photo or not. That's the housing for the Tijuana Amazon facility. No shot. I don't believe this. Would it surprise you? No, but it's a little too on the nose. Hassan, come out. Show the people. <laughs> you look like the slow kid in a phys ed class, dude. You look like you're about to get destroyed in dodgeball. <laughs> 